Welcome to Next Game's video showing the acquisition of the mythic weapon, Nirvana. This video picks up right before the final battle. For anyone unaware of how to acquire a mythic weapon, these are the steps I've followed thus far. So the first step in acquiring a mythic weapon is to acquire the corresponding vigil weapon from Nizal Isle Investigation. This basically involves killing notorious monsters until the particular one you want drops. The second step is to reach Floor 100 Nizal Isle Investigation on your own runic disc, and this will give you a runic key. Step 3 is to defeat all three of the Art Uhan Beastman Champions. This is Gula Jaja, Golfer the Menacing, and Medusa. Fourth step is to defeat the four chariots in Salvage, the Armored Chariot, the Battleclad Chariot, the Long Armored Chariot, and the Long Bowed Chariot. Step five is then to go into Inherjar, beat all of the chambers, and then defeat Odin. The sixth step is to achieve Captain Rank in Assault, which basically involves beating all 50 Assaults. Now after you've done all that, you then basically go on to the second phase, which is the one I've just completing, where you need to collect 150,000 Nizal tokens. This takes anywhere from 30 to 50 runs, to, depending on just basically how your success rate is and whether you're doing it with other people. Step 8 is to collect 100,000 ampules of Thrin Icor. This is from Enherjar, and it takes approximately 53 Tier 3 runs to complete this. The ninth step is to beat all 50 of those assaults that you already beat for your captain rank all over again, and this time trading a special item to the rune of release at the end of each one of those assaults so that you can get credit for it. So step 10, you have some options in regards to how you're going to accomplish, so I'll spend a minute talking about this so everyone has a good idea of how you can get past this step. The objective of step 10 is to trade 30,000 Alexandrite to pop a rune. Now originally the idea of how you would acquire these is through salvage. You can do a run these days in about 15 to 45 minutes depending on how efficient you are and that will net you anywhere from 100 to 300 Alexandrite. Going by that math it's going to take you 100 to 300 salvage runs to get enough to finish this step. Therefore just to make sure you don't burn out in salvage I would recommend that you supplement your gill with other sources and purchase them off the auction house. Things like doing dynamis runs and selling those currencies, beating the dynamis lord, selling his currency, trading in your sparks for shields and NPCing those for 28k each, doing omen runs for astrals and selling those on the auction house. And then lastly, you can always do the Zenny Notorious Monster system, defeat Pandemonium Worn, and he always drops anywhere from 6 to 12 million worth of drops as well. So I suggest you kind of do a mixture of those to kind of make it not so monotonous as you get past step 10. Once you are past step 10, you're then on to the defeating of the Zeni NMs Tinin, Sarmia, and Tigger. Now sadly, you're not going to be able to use those pops for a Pandemonium Warden pop, but it will be able to fulfill this objective and bring you right to this point in the cutscene that we left at. Let's see where it goes from here. So this is it, the final battle for your mythic, called Forging a New Myth. Now I had limited information in regards to exactly how this fight goes, and I know if I lose it, I was going to have to do all the tiers of Zenny NMs over again, including the bosses. So I definitely kind of played it safe during this fight, but I will point out the things that I did incorrectly or played it a little too safe so that if you're doing this on Summoner, you could do it efficiently. First, let's start with what I knew. I knew that once I entered, I was going to be up against two notorious monsters. The first one, called Zack, I needed to do two to three weapon skills on using my mythic weapon. He would then disappear, and a new notorious monster called Balran would appear. 
Once Ball Run appeared, I needed to wait until he used my specific Nizal Isle weapon skill against me, in this case, Nirvana. Once he did that, I then needed to get all three tiers of my Aftermath in on him for my weapon skill. So that means I needed to get a weapon skill in between 1000 and 1099 TP, another one in between 2000 and 2099 TP, and then a third one at max TP of 3000. Once I did all three, I could win the fight, and it would be over. The problem is, if his hit points deplete too soon, I wouldn't actually be doing any damage and therefore getting any TP. So that's why you don't see me using a big avatar here, is I, I specifically kind of wanted to just slowly go at this fight so that I could get all of those weapon skills in. I subjobbed Samurai to get as much TP as I could and use Meditate. So you're probably wondering why I'm using Carbuncle. Well, I knew that I didn't want to tank because I didn't know how much damage I was going to be taking. And I additionally didn't want one of the avatars doing too much damage to this guy, so I figured Carbuncle was going to do the least amount of damage of all my avatars uh, and still tank, so I might as well use him. In hindsight, there really was no reason to use any avatar. They're just taking needless hit points away from the enemy that you could be using to get TP for your weapon skills. So if you're doing this fight on Summoner, I would just go ahead and not even have any avatars out. Additionally, I would make sure that you ha you cast Haste Cut 2 on yourself with Garuda so that your uh, TP gain is much higher than mine is right here. I'll go ahead and stop talking now so you can enjoy the fight. The rest of the fight should go exactly as I detailed earlier in regards to the number of weapon skills that you need to do. Enjoy.
So after all that, we finally have their Nirvana, but sadly it's only level 75. We need to go through these following 10 trials in order to actually make it useful for level 119. Now the first five trials all have to do with killing a certain type of monster with Garland of Bliss weapon skill, which is what we have for Nirvana. Now I choose to do this in Abyssia because you can use the Atma to give yourself a very high TP regain rate so that you're weapon skilling about every 15 seconds. Additionally, you can farm an Imperial weapon while you're doing this. I ended up doing both Stage 1 and Stage 2 of my Ninja Kanagi as I was doing this over the last week, and I'll probably have my Imperium finished here in the next two weeks because of this, so keep in mind the other things you can be doing while you're fulfilling these objectives. Additionally, there is a lot of fighting in Lethane that I would recommend here, and there is a belt for summoner that drops in the golden chest in Lethane that enhances your treasure hunter or gives you treasure hunter. You could really use that if you're a summoner, obviously, and using it to get drops inside of some difficult battlefields. So it's always good to be trying for that as well while you're getting through these first five trials. Trial six starts when you actually have to kill some Zeni Notorious monsters. You have to kill Tiger three times. So basically what this means is you have to do just that one tier three different times, so a total of 27 monsters and three bosses. In Trial 7, you need to kill the Long Armed Chariot three times. He can be found at the end of Silver Sea Remnant's salvage map. The eighth trial is to trade in three Mulsabars Scorcia. You can get this one of two ways. One, you can buy them off the auction house for about five million gil each. Or two, you can go through the entire Zeni NM system and kill Pandemonium Warrior two to three times. He will drop one to two of these each time you kill him. After that trial is complete, you then switch from Trials of Magian to the Obero upgrade process. With Obero, you'll first trade him 300 Bietsu, and that will upgrade it to level 119. Now you can normally stop at this process with Summoner, because all Trial 10 is going to give you is an Afterglow effect, as well as an extra 51 damage on your weapon, which you'll rarely be meleeing with. However, if you did one of those additional benefits, you then trade an additional 10,000 Bietsu to Obero for the final Afterglow level 119 weapon. The last thing is there is a way to upgrade it further beyond that point, and that is the ultimate weapon upgrade process. This basically involves some Dynamis Divergence Notorious Monsters, as well as a bunch of other objectives you need to meet. I won't be going over that in this video, but know that there is an additional upgrade process if you do want to make it the ultimate weapon. I hope everyone found that video helpful. I'll be doing another one on my Relic Katana Kikoku that I obtained last year. And then I'll be doing another video on the Empyrean Katana Kanagi that I just started as I was finishing this Nirvana process. Everyone have a good week.